Good morning viewers. Today I am present before you with the poem of Wallace Stevens entitled Sunday Morning. Before I begin the podcast, it is advisable that you keep a notebook and a pen so that you can jot down the important points relating to today's topic which is the summary of Sunday morning. It is further advisable to use earplugs for listening to the podcast. So here I begin. Sunday morning is an enigmatic poem that is part metaphysical, part romantic and explores the idea of the origin and end of eras of human belief by first introducing the reader to a woman who on a Sunday morning relaxes in her dressing gown penwa instead of presumably going to church the woman is going through a minor crisis or loss of faith she represents christianity and the speaker is there to reassure her that a new approach to the natural world paganism or humanism will be enough to sustain her spiritually wallace stevens himself wrote i quote This is not essentially a woman's meditation on religion and the meaning of life it is anybody's meditation the poem is simply an expression of paganism unquote the poem delves into the subject of belief how humans express their faith and sustain their relationship with the divine and how symbols and language change over time there are certain points which express this idea first roughly speaking it looks at the history of religious gods and the human relationship with them gods are beyond the human sphere the gods incarnate in human form the gods are within each individual human belief in the supernatural gods eternity myths is breaking down So humans have to reinvent fresh modes of belief based in reality. The Christian emphasis on fear and guilt, sacrifice in future, rewards in heaven need to be balanced by sensual experience in the real emotional world. Stevens felt that it was the job of poetry to fill the void left by the meltdown of religious faith. The world was changing fast. He was a young man at the time of the First World War, chaos, and he knew people like Marcel Duchamp in New York who were pioneers of modern art and abstraction. Through use of the imagination, a new reality might be born which would help replace the old supernatural beliefs. In his own words, the final belief is to believe in a fiction which you know to be a fiction. there be nothing else the exquisite truth is to know that it is a fiction and that you believe in it willingly his later poem notes toward a supreme fiction sets out the detail of the philosophical approach to belief stevens split this poem into three separate title sections it must be it must change it must give pleasure many of wallace stevens poems deal with this abstraction of belief and use nature death and religion as well as art and philosophy to explore profound themes sunday morning is one such poem it is written in blank verse with loose iambic pentameter lines it is full of vivid imagery biblical allusion and challenging syntax as the poem progresses through eight stanzas the speaker's perspective shifts initially it is an objective voice but soon moves into the mind of the poem where it becomes a questioning conscience before reverting back to the original basically there are two voices one that is uncertain questioning and a second that is reassuring and encourages or rather insists on change within the stanzas a series of highly visual painterly blank verse paragraphs these two voices interact This poem was first published in Poetry Magazine in 1915 with a full version appearing in Stevens first book Harmonium in 1923. Let us now come to the understanding of the poem. It's a Sunday morning 
and while many people are at church a woman is sitting outside in her nightgown eating a late breakfast and enjoying the morning if not for all the beauty around her including a pet tropical bird she would feel guilty about not being in church but when she starts to daydream she has very serious thoughts about the death of christ she imagines herself traveling with a bunch of ghosts to christ's tomb in palestine after this vision she entertains skepticism about christianity she wonders why she only has thoughts about christ when she is not thinking about other things she likes the idea of heaven but she believes that the natural world provides just as much comfort she decides there is nothing divine apart from the emotions she experiences in nature the poem compares jesus christ with jove the most powerful god in greek and roman mythology because jove represented the sun and the sky the poet thinks the worship of jove is an expression of love for these and other natural beauties also he thinks that the mythological gods feel a secret desire of the human imagination to praise nature the poet wonders if the gods created by men will lead to paradise or if earth is the only paradise the woman thinks about how happy it makes her feel to see birds about to take off from a field but she worries that once the birds have left the field won't feel like paradise anymore The poet responds that the beauties of nature have lasted longer than any specific religious idea of paradise. The woman thinks that she needs to believe in a beauty and happiness that lasts forever. The poet responds that nothing beautiful could exist without change. Death causes change, but even when death causes one thing to end, it brings about something new to take its place. The poet imagines a paradise without death or change and he decides that it would be boring and maybe even a bit sad. It also wouldn't be that different from earth except more pointless. As luck would have it, some pagan guys show up. They are dancing in a circle and waving their hands in the air like they just don't care. The men are chanting to the sun and the sounds of nature around them seem to add to the music. The men live in the present moment and do not worry about the past or future. The woman hears a voice that tells her there are no spirits clustered around Christ's tomb, which is just a grave where a person is buried. The poet sums up the poem to the reader. Without real gods or the idea of a heaven, the world seems like chaos. We are alone, but we have freedom. Humanity is like an island surrounded by wide water on every side. We are surrounded by natural beings that live independently of us and it is impossible to know their purpose or meaning. So this was a note on the summary and analysis of the poem by Wallace Stevens entitled Sunday Morning. I hope the podcast proved to be of help in making all of you understand the poem please mention your questions and observations in the comment section below please do like share and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon for latest update thank you for your valuable time here's wishing you a great day ahead